Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of Islamist Peace Discussions Inshallah in today's episode and the following episodes We will be discussing a very important period in Islamic history With next Sunday approaching February the 13th It marks 764 years since the sacking of the great city of Baghdad in the, by the hands of the Mongols More than a million people massacred, masjids destroyed Darul Hikmah reduced to rubble Deck centuries of knowledge thrown into the river such that the river became black with ink Like in this however this is a period or this sacking of the city is something we will look at next week as it marks exactly 764 years since the Mongols entered the city of Baghdad Today we will start contextualizing that period and looking exactly at what happened before the sacking of Baghdad and the Mongol sackings of the other cities, especially Khurasan. So in the 12th century, a wave of blood and destruction spread throughout the Muslim world by the hands of the Mongols. And historians say that what the Mongols did to the Muslim world was, it was unparalleled in cruelty. You know, no other city suffered such barbarity as the Muslim ones did. So how was the once mighty Muslim world, the Abbasid Khilafah, stretching from you know, Central Asia all the way down to North Africa, parts of Anatolia as well, you know, Transcaucasia, all these parts that were part of the great Abbasid Khilafah. How was it reduced down to just a few uh, countries? Well, after establishing Mongol rule in the Far East, Genghis Khan, or Genghis Khan, he turned his attention towards the Islamic world, namely Khurasan. And initially, all he wanted to do, he just wanted to establish trade routes with the Khawarizmians in Persia. However, this quickly escalated into conflict and Genghis Khan, he prepared an army of at least 100,000 men. And Muhammad II, Shah Muhammad II, who was the, the Sultan or the Shah of the Khawarizmian Empire, all he could muster was 60,000 men. Already, you know, outnumbered nearly 2 to 1. And so, the Mongols marched on Uttarar, the city of Uttarar or Uttarar. And once they arrived outside the city walls of Uttarar, Duwaini, the famous historian, he records that the air became blue, the sea boiled with the noise of drums. And with his finger, the governor, uh, referring to the governor of Uttarar, he pointed to the army on the plain, a host to which there was no end. Wallahi, those are, it is just so difficult to speak about what happened at that time and when the Mongols entered the city after a few days of besieging it the Mongols they entered the city and the entire population was massacred 40,000 to 70,000 people you know irregardless of who you were man woman child elderly soldier governor status nothing the Mongols without care they butchered every single person and then they, bar they marched, the Mongols, they marched on the great city of Bukhara itself. You know, the, the birthplace of Imam Bukhari himself. It was a beautiful, grand city. You know, he had massive, beautiful masjids and grand libraries, hubs of knowledge. But when they marched on that city, that was all reduced to rubble. You know, when they were attacking the city, they used the prisoners as human shields for the attack. The prisoners from the earlier battles with the Khawarizmians. They used those prisoners as human shields to attack the city. And when they breached the city, the, the, the entire ma population was massacred. Masjids broken down, libraries burnt, and the entire city was pillaged. And in then in March 22, the Mongols reached the capital of the Khawarizmian Empire, Samarkand. And on the fifth day of the fifth day of the siege, the defenders they surrendered they went to in, uh, Genghis Khan they reached out to him and told him you know we will surrender if you promise to spare us and so Genghis Khan he agreed and as soon as they entered the city and the Khawarizmian soldiers the defenders as soon as they laid down their weapons Genghis Khan massacred every single soldier and, the, and he, ma he massacred every single soldier every person in that city the Imams you know they were praying Salah and he took them out and he massacred all of them. And then he marched, took one city after another in Khurasan. And sources say that in Nishapur, they killed nearly every single person in that city. 
and, and then they separated the skulls of the men and women into two piles. The men's skulls in one pile and the skulls of the women in another pile. And you know, this once mighty empire, the Khawarizmian Empire, known for its silk trade and its centers of knowledge, it was a really powerful empire. And it had been reduced to nothing more now than, you know, to the Mongols, it was a stinking wasteland piled with corpses. And you know, the thing is, Genghis Khan, he used to go to these cities and he gave a speech. He used to give speeches saying that he is the punishment from God. And if these people had not sinned, then he would not have come. And to be honest, is he, is, is he wrong? These Muslims, they, they'd gone away from what gave them pride and honor. They started fighting amongst themselves. They'd forgotten who they were. And Allah sent this scourge upon the Muslim world. And you know, barely anyone had been left alive. And soon after, Genghis Khan had died and the Mongol Empire was then split into four Khanates. Monke Khan, he was one of the grand grandchildren of Genghis Khan and when he took uh, charge of the Il Khanate, he dispatched his brother Hulagu Khan to finish the conquest of the Muslim world. And one by one, city by city, the Muslims they fell to Mongol tyranny. And even after the death, you know, even after the death of Genghis Khan, they received no breaks. Straight after Hulagu was dispatched to finish the job and I'll say now you know a few of the um, numbers of how many people were dead and wallahi it is it brings a tear to the eyes of us this is our history this is how we were massacred Nishapur 1,774,000 dead Baghdad 1,600,000 dead Hirat 1,600,000 dead Samarkand, 950,000 dead. Merv, 750,000 dead. Aleppo, 50,000 dead. Entire cities ruined to rubble. There was nothing left in those cities. Barely. You have to understand what was happening in these cities. Barely anyone was alive. You know, there was no. The houses were burnt. The masjids were burnt. The libraries were burnt. There was no walls left in these cities. And just imagine what these people were going through. Wallahi, 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 it is, it is so sad what happened to us. And, it, oh, and, and the fact that we have forgotten this history, we have forgotten what happened to us. Wallahi, it is so sad. And so I, I will end the video here. And uh, obviously next week, inshallah, we will be talking about the sacking of the city of Baghdad itself in more detail. And uh, I do hope this, took some benefit from this video and have learned some more uh, you know we all know about what happened to Baghdad but we don't really know what happened to the cities before that like Samarkand like Bukhara like Hirat like Nishap Nish uh, Nishapur so I do hope you took some benefit and uh, do stay around and stay tuned for next week's episode on the sacking of Baghdad Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh